YouTube, what is good? It is your boy Flex. And put your muscles up, because we back with another video. In today's video, man, we're going to be reacting to the most intense atmosphere in football. Partisan versus Red Star, man. Derby days. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look into this little football hooligan life stuff, man. See what it's about some more, you know what I'm saying? Get some more insight. Let's cut out all the chit chat. Grab your headphones, turn the volume up. Get that full experience. Get into the videos. Watch us go. These are the games that create an atmosphere like no other. These are the games that can make a war zone of a city. These are Derby Days. Yeah, I get hyped up with this music too though. All right, so this is it, the last of our Derby Days trips. And if I'm perfectly honest, it's probably the fixture that I've been worrying about the most. However, this is also the fixture I've most been looking forward to. I mean, I'm always going on about active support and how I believe it plays the most important role in football. Well, the fans here in Belgrade are about as active as supporters can be. It's Partizan, it's Red Star, it's the eternal derby. The Belgrade derby is one of the most special, unique, football games in the world. It's part of you, it defines you. Your whole city and whole country is speaking only about football. It's one of the things that defines a city. The clubs are so important to the identity of the city. Pa dobro, ovde ovde cele nedelje pred derby se oseća velika i na, na ulici, u kafićima, u, u svuda je prisutna ta atmosfera pred derby. But the whole country stops and watches the game. And if you want to experience the atmosphere and the city properly, <laughs> you need to see uh, the derby game. U karijeri sam igrao još jedan derbi u Italiji između Genova i Sampdorije i tamo isto vruć derbi navijači su fenomenalni, ali mislim da 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 ovo je jedan od poslednjih derbija gde su navijači tako vrući kao 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 ovde u Beogradu. Sport is always a way to to just exert your your stresses, uh, to exert your passion, you know, to show to have a break from everyday life because it's not easy here. People don't have money. People can travel, people don't care what to do else, just to go to the football. So the, your, your average 14-year-old, 15-year-old, 16-year-old, when, when it comes to Derby Day, for them that's it. That's that day that they've been waiting for. That's that day to scream the loudest, to shout the loudest, to show why you're better than the opposition. They release their tension. Yeah, yeah. Too That's many tension around in normal life, so you need some place where you can uh, expel that tension. And that's what I think just is the magic about football. You forget about life for 90 minutes. And in Belgrade, that's where it's special. This match is notorious the world over for the behaviour of its fans, and I want to find out just how much of this reputation is justified and what attending the Belgrade derby is really like. I can only say that our best players are the best in the world and we think they are the best trainers in the world. Yeah, definitely both, uh, both teams have very good support. This part of the Europe have a lot of passion. Greeks are a passionate nation, Serbs are a passionate nation. This is Balkan and here is everything is so that we are a little special. This part of the Europe is uh, uh, people with uh, warm blood. Two big clubs and same same place. They, that's the reason why they, they always fighting between them. Who is best? In the 80s, the people didn't hate so much, like, but now it's crazy. <laughs> the clubs that drive these two sets of supporters so crazy were formed in the aftermath of the Second World War when the communist president Tito took over the country. Both clubs um, were established in, on the ashes uh, of this country after World War II. Uh, the Partisan was established by a group of young uh, Yugoslav army officers, the veterans of the Spanish Civil War, who've fought fascism in Spain and then they've beaten Nazis here. Partisan was a team of uh, army and uh, the uh, Red Star was being a team of, of uh, policy. Uh, for partisans, it's like they represent the army, and for Red Star, there is a story they represent the police. But um, the urban, the other legend says that uh, Red Star was the people's club, and like some kind of the re reaction to the communism, because people didn't like communism and they wanted to have something on their own. Youth of uh, Belgrade said, okay, we must have a club. Let us found some club. 
So that was the day of 4 March 1945, and it exists from that days, and everything else is history. Despite great success in the intervening years, including a European Cup win for Red Star in 1991, today the clubs are almost better known for the fans' behaviour off the pitch than the players' exploits on it. Unfortunately, the picture that uh, we are sending to the world, to the Europe, and uh, not, on, not the picture of good football, not the picture of great goals, but the picture of violent scenes. I think it is because of the situation in country. After the war, everyone were unpleasant and full of, of hate and uh, they needed something to, to release themselves. And that's a really, really good point. <clears throat> the, the, the image, you know what I mean? A lot of people in the comments would, would, would tell me that I don't understand, I don't get it, and you're, you're right. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not from where you're from. I haven't experienced what you've experienced. I don't. I don't. I'm not even a, so a football, soccer fan. You know what I mean? So of course I don't understand anything about that lifestyle. But the image, you know what I mean? The image that that the lifestyle portrays is is clearly clearly not a good one. You know, and and of course. Of course, there there is way more backstory to it. There's way more. There's this way deeper than what's what's on the surface, you know. And 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 I'm sure that can be said with a lot of different groups, organizations, and gangs. You know what I mean? There's just it's just way deeper and and, and way more into it than what we could actually ever understand. Oh, but the picture, you know, the picture is kind of. It's kind of hard to be like, oh, yeah, no, no, that, that's cool. You know, you definitely, it's definitely something you have to dig a little deeper to find a better understanding of. To go somewhere and shout and to fight. There are incidents, of course, uh, on the way uh, to the stadium on match days, uh, the fans getting skirmishes or something. But uh, those are the fans who really like that sort of thing. I don't like collectivity uh, guilt. I like personal guilt. I make uh, something bad, I'm guilty. Not all of us. One of the problems I've had when looking into this derby is that when you start reading up on the ultras, it doesn't take long before you come across some pretty disturbing stories and accusations. But I refuse to accept that that's all there is to it. I want to find out how representative these violent elements are and see what else is driving the incredible passion of this derby. I can't say that the reputation is entirely unjustified. It's somewhat fair, but uh, I think uh, it's not as bad as people think. Yeah, there has been violence. I have seen violence. I have had some small missiles thrown at me by, by Red Star fans when I was ex exiting uh, a game. But for the most part, no. That's why when people come over from, from abroad, initially they might be, you know, they have that kind of negative perspective. The spin of the Western media has been, you know, Eastern Europe, it's dangerous, you know, after the England game, you know, apparent racism. People love people coming here, whether you're black, Asian, Indian. When you come here, you're going to be welcomed with a big heart. People want to show you that it isn't true what you, you know, might see in the media. I think that there's, there's much more to this rivalry than just, just violence. I feel it's fantastic because uh, people here, fans here, sing all the time, all 90 minutes. Every one of your senses will be completely alive. People here feel like they've been hard done by, you know? They, they haven't had the opportunity to show a positive light. They haven't had the opportunity to, to show the world that, you know, we, we can, we are a good people. It's, it's not all bad. It's certainly, as far as partisan fans are concerned, they're proud of who they are. They're proud of being grobbery and, uh, and, and, you know, they'll they'll relish the chance to show you what they can do. There's always like a concentration on this negative, negative. But when you see, you're gonna see the color, you're gonna see the, when they pick, pick up the tifos, you know? The stands are gonna be covered in color. They're gonna be colored in, in noise, in passion. And it's, it's gonna be brilliant, man. I can't wait. It really seems as though the stories I heard before coming out here are by no means the be all and end all of the eternal derby. However, I am still a little apprehensive about game day itself. Expect to see some things that you probably haven't seen in England for a while. I think for the Derby Day, lots of tension is around the city because too many police on every corner is police standing. Not only normal police, but robocops. You're definitely going to have something they call a bacleada. A bacleada is when you just throw as many fares as possible after a goal goes in. So uh, outside the stadium, we're taking our cameras now. What do you think? No, I don't think it's so smart because around the stadium, people here have bad experience from the past and they don't like to be recorded. 
yeah. they really don't like to be recorded because of all the stories they were connected before with the politics around football. I mean, what, what, could, what could be the worst situation if we pull out our cameras? <laughs> don't ask me that. Yeah, you don't want to say yeah, <laughs> Who says building an online store has to be hard? With Bluehost Website Builder, it's... It's still early here in Belgrade and we haven't really come across many fans yet. All we're really seeing is a lot, I mean a lot of riot police. However, it doesn't matter because for the first time on Derby Days, we're headed into the stadium early. Why? Because we have gained access like never before. We are closer to the action than we've ever been before. You are going to see Derby Days like you've never seen before. All right, like you've never seen before, yeah. What it is about a, a crowd cheering like that, but for some reason it always gives me the chills. Whether I'm at a, a basketball game, football game, professional or high school or whatever, when the crowd goes when the crowd goes off like that, like I, it really gives me goosebumps, man. It's crazy. <laughs>
Well, where do I start with that one? I mean, usually we come out all excited telling you what just happened, but to be honest, it's the next day and I'm still drained from the adrenaline, mentally and physically, of being part of that match live. First and foremost, let's talk about the violent reputation that surrounds this derby and the fans. Totally unfounded, at least in our perspective. From the second we have got here, fans, management, even players have treated us like brothers. Uh, the way they treat fellow fans. So proud to show off their city, and in particular, their football and derby. It's just been exceptional. Kobanani and I have been around the world covering football, but never have we seen a celebration like Partizan's with that last minute goal. They were with them, they were singing with them. It was beyond anything that we have experienced. But again, that's only half the story. Red Star, I mean, they went through two missed penalties, a final minute loss, but again, they, they didn't stop. At the end of the game, instead of booing, they made their players come over to them and they sang their love for them. The only negative element we saw was when a small, and I mean a very small element of the Red Star fans, set fire to some seats in the Partizan Stadium. But that honestly paled in comparison to the celebration that was this match day. You can see why it is so special to the people of this city. Yes, they don't have the best football on the pitch, but football, as we've been saying throughout this whole series, is all about effort and boy, do they have something special. From Barcelona to here in Belgrade, that's all from us at Derby Days for this season. However, stay tuned and make sure you subscribe to Copper 90 because I'm going to be back soon with something very special. I get it. I get it. And I understand. I understand the passion, I understand the love, I understand even the, 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 the origins, you know? But I will never be able to really truly understand what it's like to be a football hooligan. I'll never really truly understand, you know? And that's okay. And that's okay, because I'm, I'm only one human. I'm not supposed to understand everything in the world. But I can appreciate things. And I appreciate the camaraderie you guys have. I appreciate the love you guys show each other. You know, and I appreciate the passion. It's a beautiful thing to see. And I feel like the world needs more of that. 100%, man. That was a very good video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. So make sure you give it a thumbs up. Post in the comments down below. And hit that big red button. Until next time, y'all. Put your muscles up. It's your boy Flex. I'm out of here. Peace.